to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest here, the capital city of Hungary. And today we are kicking this members chat class off with a task one writing question for the academic IELTS, more specifically, a line graph example and strategy. Hi, Shang Hung Tsai. Good to see a member joining in on time. How you doing? All right, students. Again, these material strategies, they do come from our websites for academic IELTS help. Check us out at aehelp.com. That's academicenglishhelp.com. And for the general version of the exam, do check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. That's general IELTS help. Dot com. And again, make sure to download our app for the academic. It integrates with our website for a unique learning experience. In your app store, look for academic IELTS help. Alexander, I love how you are greeting us with different words from around the world. A konnichiwa to you as well. Greeting in Japanese. Uh, Matt Konen, good to uh, have you in class also. Wonderful. Members joining in on time. Good to see it. All right, students, just a quick peek at those websites. This is the academic here. It's with the blue background. This is aehelp.com. Click that big red button to join us there. And for the general, it is this green background. And you can click to join there. Uh, notice these um, logos here, British Council, IELTS Registration Center. If you are a student in uh, Saudi Arabia, we can register you for your IELTS exam as well. And we can give you a special package. We're working on other countries also, and hopefully we'll have that to you soon. All right, let's get back to... Today's lesson, uh, just a little bit more here with the announcements. If you have questions, send us an email to adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. Okay, so task one, line graph, followed by an everyone chat class for reading. And I have posted the remainder of the classes on our YouTube channel. Here is task one question for the day. You should spend about 20 minutes on this task. The following graph shows the sales in electronics made in a store in a given year. Report the main features and make comparisons where relevant. This is quite a standard type of task one question that we've adapted this graph for. It says Westwood Electronics Store Sales. Um, all right, and then we have some colorful lines here. Now, if you're doing the paper-based exam, you will not see these colorful lines. Instead, you will see dashed lines like this or dotted lines like this or double solid lines like that. So. Uh, make sure you are aware of that. Hi, Roshni. Hi, Amarjeet. Right on time. We're just getting into our task one question. Okay, so um, let me shrink this a little bit so you can see the whole graph. There we go. Um, how is that, students? Is that a little bit too bright? Do you want me to darken the screen so you can see that clearer? Here, let me bring it down a notch like that. Is is that a little bit better? I'll zoom in once we're doing our analysis. Um, for now, uh, you don't need to see the particulars so much, just the general concept. Hi, Eva. Hi, Zainab. Good to see more members joining in. By the way, now is a great time to become a member. We do have different membership levels for the channel as well. Okay, so here is our line graph. We have one, two, three, four, five, six different lines for the six different products that are sold in this electronics shop. 
And on the y-axis here, we have the uh, money values, zero dollars in the bottom, then 20,000, 40,000, 60,000, 80,000. Uh, members, what, how can we describe these changes here? Um, so between zero to 20,000, 20 to 40,000, 40 to 60,000. How can we describe that correctly in statistics or when uh, writing about graphs or discussing graphs? What can we say about these distances? Here we have the months for the year 2006. And this first one is January. And this is for 2006. And then we have February. We have March, April, May, and the last month is June. So we have it for six months. Okay. So how can we describe this y-axis here? This 0, 20,000, 40,000, 60,000. So Roshni says it's nominal data and interval data. That's right, Roshni. So this x-axis here is nominal data. Okay, it's months of the year. Sure, yeah. In a sense, this is actually ordinal data because one comes after the next. So February comes after January, March comes after February. So uh, we could say it's ordinal data. Nominal, ordinal, both work in that case. And Sheng Hung Tsai says the y-axis shows interval data for 20,000. That's right, Sheng Hung, yeah. So the y-axis here is interval data with intervals of twenty thousand dollars right that's right very good okay so y-axis from zero to one hundred and twenty thousand with intervals of twenty thousand and the x-axis is months of the year half a year is given it's ordinal data from january to june okay very good excellent Okay, um, so, so far so good. Let's get to writing the overview. Okay, so a good task one essay should have three parts. Should have an overview, a nice body paragraph with some good analysis or analyses for plural, and a summary. Okay, that's what we should have for a solid task one response that gets a nice high band score. So my first step, what is it? What should I do for step number one? Hi, Kesey. That's okay. We're just getting going with our overview here. What's our step number one here? What do we need to do? Okay, it's always the first step. And again, always start with task. And the first step is paraphrasing with details. Roshni, Vanity Sean, good. And Shang Hung, good. Amarjeet, for Doves. Mekonen, Danish, please remember that extra little step, the with details. That will help you possibly to earn an extra 0.5 band right away. And even if it's in your mind, Amarjeet, for Dobbs, Mekonen, still think about it. Okay, Danish? All right, so let's do that. Let's paraphrase this uh, statement with some more details now that we have seen the line graph, okay? Go ahead with the paraphrase, adding your details. I'm going to do the same and then we'll match up and see uh, how accurate we are with this overview, okay? So the overview, it has two parts. 
paraphrase with details plus the most obvious feature. Okay, that's what a good overview has. So here we go. Here's a quick peek at the uh, line graph again. Okay, so we have uh, six different products, audio equipment, camera, computer, electronic. You might not have to spell all of those out, all right? You could, it's not, not a bad idea, but it's okay to say six different types of electronics as well. All right, you're going to refer to them by name a little bit later anyway. All right, so that is my paraphrase. Jaya Ram, ready, welcome. You're a new member, that's fantastic. Good to have you on board. Make sure to send me an email and uh, Jaya Ram, uh, in your email, include your membership level so I can hook you up with the appropriate perks uh, and bonuses. So let me know if you're a level one, two, three, or four, okay? So I can check that out quickly in our back end. Um, all right, so here is my paraphrase. The given line graph should be singular, not plural. It's just one line graph. Depicts the sales from zero to $120,000 with intervals of 20,000. That's a bit of an additive clause, so let's close that up with another comma. Um, for six different categories of electronic items, for the first half of 2006. All right, so that's more or less the same as the original question, just uh, a little bit more detailed. Now, if I go back and compare it, I maybe can add a little bit more. So the following line graph, okay, so instead of saying graph, I said line graph depicts. Uh, sales, I described it in detail with the dollar amount. I gave a little bit more for electronics, describing that it's six categories of electronics. And here it says made in a store. Now, I didn't mention that. And we are given the name of this store. It's called Westwood Electronics Store. So maybe I'll add that in just to make it a bit better. Okay, there, that's a little bit more detail. So don't be shy to go back and check your accuracy of information, especially at home. And even during the IELTS exam, if you've realized of, oh, the question actually says in a store, and I forgot to mention the store, and I really want to say at Westwood Electronics, it's okay to do something like this. Okay, so that's why you should try to leave a little bit of space between your letters. Um, they give you some pretty big lines on your um, writing paper in the uh, paper-based exam. Of course, in the computer-based exam, you can just go back. That's one of the nice advantages of the computer-based exam is that you can actually go back and write it in like I just did. But in the paper-based exam, um, they give you some pretty wide lines, so hopefully you're not taking up all of the uh, space between the lines. And you can fit 
in some um, other information. That's just an example using that little V slice to get that information in. Okay, so you can do that uh, in the actual paper-based exam as well. Make sure to keep it clear. So don't make it messy, but it's okay to slice in information in the paper-based. And again, the computer-based, if you have good touch typing skills in English, it's one advantage there is you can just stick words in like that. All right, let's see what our members have added for their overview. Uh, Danish says the line graph, oh, let me get you back there, Danish. You're already off screen as other students are entering in. Okay, Danish says the line graph depicts sales of six different types, uh, it's plural Danish, types of electronics, uh, of electronic products. Okay, Danish, the plural always comes on the noun. So if electronic is the adjective, then products uh, has the S on the end for the plural, okay? So one more time, Danish. The line graph depicts sales for six different types of electronic products in the range from zero to $120,000 in the first half of 2006. You don't need the word year because 2006 is the year, Danish, okay? <clears throat> Roshni says, the line graph depicts the six different electronic products manufactured in the store within a year shown uh, from zero to $120,000. Okay, let me read the end of that, Roshni, one more time. Manufactured in store within a year and shows the sale from zero to $120,000. Um, Roshni, the word manufactured is awkward there because we manufacture uh, electronics. I don't think this store is manufacturing them. They're just retailing. They're just selling um, these products. Uh, Shang Hung Tsai says, the line graph depicts the six different types of electronic products for the first six months of 2006, including sales from zero to $120,000. Um, Sheng Hung, use the uh, dollar symbol or write the word dollars. I recommend the symbol. Don't use both. That's considered a mistake. So if you have the dollar symbol and the word dollars, that's considered a mistake. So take out the word. Just use the symbol. Uh, save valuable time and words for more important parts of the essay. Okay. Uh, and then Sheng Hung, you can just finish with the comma after uh, $120,000 and write uh, with intervals of 20,000. So your second bit there with the N, the Y axis is too wordy. You don't need all those words. You just need with intervals of $20,000, okay? Uh, Kesey says the given line graph depicts the sales of Westwood Electronics stores and six different categories of items in the first half of 2006. Very good, Kesey. Very nice. Okay. You didn't describe the range of uh, the sales data as it's reported, so the zero to 120,000. You might want to include that, Kesey, but otherwise it's good. Okay. Uh, Amarjeet says the given line graph illustrates information about the sales of six electronic, electronic products in 2006. In the first half of 2006, Amarjit, it's only the first six months, okay? Uh, the amounts are measured uh, from zero to $120,000. Okay, you can do it like that, Amarjit, write out $1,000, sure. McConan Bizowit says, this line graph depicts the sales of six different electronics from zero to $120,000. Watch your spacing, McConan and make sure it's a capital K for the thousand. In Westwood store, big W, big S, with intervals of 20,000 for the first six months of 2006, not 16, careful with information mistakes. For Dobbs, the line graph depicts six different types of electronic devices sold at Westwood electronic store for the first half of 2006. Not sales for Dobbs, but sold, okay? 
um, sold by customer service agents. So you're using a bit of a passive voice there and you need the uh, past participle of sale. So you need sold, okay? Uh, Danish, the line graph depicts the retail for six different types of electronic products in the range from zero to $120,000 in the first half of 2006. So now you rewrote it Danish with correct grammar. Good for you. It reads much better And Danish and students. If you look at Danish's first piece of writing and then his second with the corrections, that's actually the difference between a band six, five, seven and a band eight, eight, five. Okay. So it's a whole band difference there. It's remember students that when you get into those higher band scores, like seven, eight, nine, the differences between those band scores become very narrow. Okay. Uh, a band six is a proficient user of English. Band seven is a good user. A band eight is a very good user. And a band nine is an expert user. So the differences there are very subtle. They're very small. Okay. Um, the lower you go, the differences get much bigger. All right. Keep that in mind. All right. One more. Alexander says the sales of six different types of electronic devices produced in a store during the first half of 2006 are depicted in the given line graph um, with a range of zero to a hundred twenty thousand dollars with increments of twenty thousand dollars increments not steps alexander increments okay increments all right uh not bad alexander a couple of slight mistakes careful with information mistakes also okay all right students so um let's take a peek at the main feature. So what is most obvious when we look at this graph? So what is kind of like, well, bam, there it is. It's really obvious that, uh, that this piece of information is the main feature. So here, hopefully you can see this now. Um, the first one is audio equipment. Uh, then it's camera revenue, the red one. Computer revenue is the yellow. Uh, electronics miscellaneous revenue, that means little gadgets, this and that, is the green. Uh, TV revenue is the orange. And video equipment revenue is the purple. So, uh, what is the most obvious feature when we look at this graph? What do we notice right away? Okay, so Sheng Hung says uh, camera revenue is very obvious. Um... Preeti agrees, Roshni agrees, that camera revenue. Uh, yeah, I think that's true. So we can see that cameras are the most and uh, computer revenue is the least, sure. Uh, I think there's a more obvious feature. Again, students, uh, what I'm noticing is that you're getting lost in the individual product, right? So these are the individual products here. But remember, okay, and you can practice this at home. It's, it's a very good tip or a trick. Um, yeah, there we go. Alexander, very good. So notice Alexander's comment, students. Alexander says everything rose, everything increased in sales. That's the most obvious feature. Um, so when you're practicing this at home, and you can do this with bar graphs, line graphs, pie charts, um, circle the biggest elements. So here, the biggest element are all of these lines together. So if I circle all of these lines together, I can actually see that all of the lines here and here um, increased. So yeah, there's some fluctuation and there's some changes. There's no way that you can write about all of that. It's too much for a 150, 200 word essay. But certainly we can see that they're lower here 
and they're higher here. So as summer approaches, June, uh, this electronics store is increasing their sales. So everything increases. That's right, Shanghung. Yeah, that's the most obvious feature, I would say. Then after that, camera revenue is high, uh, computer revenue is low, but that I think can come later in the body paragraph and the analysis. I hope you agree with me on that. Okay, so let's add this one more sentence into our overview, okay? So just in very simple terms, discuss that at first glance, it's clear that sales overall from January to June increased, all right? So add that sentence to your overview. I'm going to do the same, okay? So I'm going to add in the sentence to complete my overview. And for all of our viewers, uh, for those of you who are not members and not able to chat, just keep in mind that the overview is also your introduction. I tend to see some confusion among students and candidates for the IELTS these days because some of them seem to think that you need some introduction aside from the overview, but that's not true. In an expository essay, your overview is your introduction. There does not need to be a separate uh, introduction aside from your overview. Okay, so again, for all of our viewers, your overview is your introduction. It's one and the same. All right. Keep that in mind. Okay, so let's add in that piece of information. All right, I'm going to keep it simple. So this is mine. At first glance, it is evident that all six classes of products increased in revenue from January to June of 2006. Now, you probably saw me start to write categories here, but I realized I have the word categories there, so I quickly thought about a paraphrase or a synonym for categories. Another way to say it is classes. And... Um, exchanged it. I don't really want to avoid repeating words, especially in close proximity to each other. So this is my overview now. The given line graph depicts the sales from zero to $120,000 with intervals of $20,000 at Westwood Electronics for six different categories of electronic items for the first half of 2006. At first glance, it is evident that all six classes of products increased in revenue from January to June of 2006. Okay, I still feel like I have a little bit of redundancy, all right? Uh, first half of 2006 at first glance. This first and this first, I don't like them so close together even though they're used differently. So I'm going to replace the at first glance with the word immediately. And again, you want to practice this at home. In the actual exam, if it's the paper base, you might want to just cross it out and write immediately above. In the computer base, you can of course go back erase and retype. All right. Um, Kesey says, overall, revenue of all items increased at the end of June 2006 in comparison to January. So Kesey, make that comparison to January. Um, it's June, not July, but that's okay. And um, I like the, you, that you're using the word overall. That's a, that's a very appropriate uh, term here, Kesey, overall. McConan says it is, uh, it is clear to see that all six products uh, rose from the beginning of June 2006 
from the beginning of the year to June of 2006. Um, okay, McConan, you need to include uh, the value. So uh, I would just go clearly, comma, McConan. It's a little bit awkward the way you're starting. So clearly, comma, all six products rose in sales from the beginning of the year to June of 2006. That would be the mo most um, clear way to, to write it, McConan. Uh, Danish says clearly, so Danish is using that. Clearly it can be seen that all six products uh, revenue uh, increased in the given time span. Uh, Danish, that works. Um, now revenue, Danish, belongs to the word products, so you have to show possession there, Danish. So products, you have to follow that with an apostrophe after the S because it's plural. It's multiple products. Show the possession for revenue, so put an apostrophe. That would be a punctuation mistake, Danish. So after products, you need that apostrophe after the S. Okay? Otherwise, good. Um, for Dov says, describing the image in more detail, it is clear that the revenue of all items grew or had grown throughout the period. Have grown, mm, grew. I would go with grew for Dov's, for the tense. Grew throughout the period. I would make that a general statement because it's generally true. Okay. Uh, Shang Hung Tsai says, furthermore, it can also be noticed by the reader, Shang Hung. So you need the uh, passive. So furthermore, it can also be noticed that all six categories of devices uh, climbed in profits in 2006. Yeah, in the first half of 2006, Shang Hung, careful. We only see the first half of the year. Okay, very close students. So just some very, very slight little mistakes. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. Uh, members, I would love to read everybody's uh, comment, but unfortunately we'll get stuck uh, just on the overview then. So I promise I'll look at other students for the analysis, but uh, we got to keep moving here. Uh, let's move to uh, marking our points for comparison. So let me... Uh, this kind of as big as possible while retaining visibility. Okay. All right. So, uh, just a second. Not sure what I did there. Uh, let me close that up. I'll open that up again. Just a second. Kind of messed it up trying to zoom in. But anyway, we are going for the analysis now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Definitely messed something up here. Uh, just bear with me, members. I think I have a book view or something going of, of it right now. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's a different view of it. Okay, all right, back at it we go. Okay, so let's, uh, let me try to get this a little bit bigger yet. Okay, it's just tricky with the screen size. Okay, there we go. I think that's maximum. All right, let me move this a little bit as well all right okay okay so there we go that's as big as i can get it let me get it a little bit darker all right here we go um so uh what should be my point number one what should i discuss first okay what, what would you mark first on your sheet so what would be the Number one point for discussion. How would you start your analysis or the body paragraph? So for Dobbs cleverly says, let's just go with the most, which is camera revenue. 
Yeah, sure. I think that makes sense. So camera revenue is here. Okay. And uh, 120,000 is at the top. So this is 100,000. This is 80,000. Okay, 60,000. Um, so camera revenue somewhere between 60 and 80,000 finishing at uh, around 110. So that would be our point number one all the way from here to here. Uh, what would be my point number two? So what would be my second point for discussion? This is a little bit of a trickier question. I think point number one is quite clear. And then what would be my point number two? There's a few different ways that you could go about analyzing this. I think there's a few different clever ways to discuss the sales of these items. Yeah, so Alexander, very good. So Alexander is asking, can we just uh, maybe unite some of these lines? So Alexander, that's very smart, and I'm very happy that you recognize that. So notice how a couple of these electronic items, they're quite synonymous, okay? The word that we're thinking of here is synonymous. Synonymous means they're very close to each other and two items video equipment and electronics miscellaneous um, seem to almost move together at some points and they kind of finish very close as well so they start very close there's some variation uh, in these months here but then they kind of finish similarly okay in fact cameras miscellaneous and video equipment are fairly close to each other with camera equipment finishing a little bit higher okay again remember students that your goal for task one is to translate the data into human language as if you're speaking to the other departments of this electronics company and of course the next one that you can uh, tie together yeah, so Preeti says, let's do the purple and green together, and that's exactly what we're talking about, um, is, uh, is the orange and the blue, which Amarjeet just said, how about TV and audio? They're also quite equal. They move very, very similarly. Absolutely. So we have audio equipment. They start almost at the same amount, and they finish almost at the same amount as well. So that would be my point number three uh, for discussion. Okay. I think if we actually figured out the mean, the center line for these, we would find that the revenue for each of these items is very, very close uh, in these first six months. Now, of course, the one that sticks out like a sore thumb is the uh, computer revenue. Um, computer starts the least, ends the least, very little variance. And uh, there is a slight increase in sales, which is, hey, not bad. So that would be number four, okay, certainly. Now, we only have four points, but of course, to discuss these clearly, you would likely want a couple of sentences for some, especially for point number two and point number three. You need a few different sentences to clearly describe their start, stop points, and of course, a bit of variation, Okay, so those movements. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, let's discuss uh, point number one. So point number one is uh, camera uh, revenue. Now, camera revenue does something interesting here between January and February. Uh, and that might be noteworthy in your point number one discussion. Uh, what would you call this movement? So how would you describe, what would be a good word to use for this movement of camera sales from January to February? I think I might take, especially if I know I have good writing fluency, I might take um, an extra few seconds to describe this movement of camera sales from January to February because that's, 
that's interesting. That is somewhat different from what these other lines are doing. So Preeti says it's a dramatic rise. Um, yeah, I think there's a better word, Preeti, than a dramatic increase or a dramatic rise. Anybody know in statistics or in um, if you follow stock markets when there's this kind of a movement, what it's called? There's a very good word for that in English. Sword is okay, but there's even a better word. Hermes says sharp rise. No, there's a better word for that. No, it starts with an S. I'll give you a hint. I'll bet one of you will guess it. Um, another letter here. There. It's a uh, five-letter word. There we go, Kesey. Very good. So Kesey, I know Kesey, you work in the bank system, so you might have heard this word. It's a spike. So that is a spike in sales. Okay, spike. It's a spike in sales. Yeah, very good. Spike it is. Kesey, well done. I knew one of you would pick up on that. Okay, so let's describe uh, our point number one, including this spike in sales uh, in February, and then the drop, and then the gradual increase. Okay, so let's go with point number one. We'll get back to our essay here. Remember this word synonymous. That will be useful in the writing. Okay, so let's get into our analysis, our body paragraph. Here we go. Oh, I course because I didn't save it so I erased my introduction so while you start writing your analysis I'll rewrite my overview And I'm hoping that most of you are now done with that first sentence of the analysis. Let's see. Not yet. Okay, waiting for it. So write up that first sentence. <clears throat> I'm going to do the same. So camera equipment started at around $70,000. If you're wanting a second peek at the graph, 70, then it spiked in February to 100,000 and finished just over roughly 110,000, okay? 
Uh, yes, Amarjeet, I am going to put a comma in after the immediately. It should be there. Okay. All right. Again, I just had to rewrite the uh, overview because I didn't save it when I closed it a few moments ago. But we're looking for this sentence here, students, the analysis. Okay, so at closer inspection, camera equipment brought in the most money, starting at around $70,000. And I'm not going to, so I, I, I do like writing 70000 this way because it's the shortest way to write this figure. And I don't want to waste a lot of time and energy on writing these big numbers like 70,000, especially using words, right? So starting at around 70,000 in January, then a sudden spike to 100,000 in February, followed by a drop in March and then a gradual climb to roughly $115,000 in June, by June. Okay, so that would be a detailed description of that point number one. So at closer inspection, comma, camera equipment brought in the most money, comma. The comma here shows that I'm going to describe that in more detail, starting at around $70,000 in January, comma. Then a sudden spike to $100,000 in February, comma, followed by a drop in March, comma, and then a gradual climb to roughly 115,000 by June. Now, how do I know that I need a comma in all of these places? Well, because I keep giving the next piece of information, it's all related, it's all describing that one line, and when I'm reading, I need those uh, one-third stops, okay? So when I read it, listen to the intonation. At closer inspection, camera equipment brought in the most money, starting at around $70,000 in January, then a sudden spike to $100,000 in February, followed by a drop in March, and then a gradual climb to roughly $115,000 by June. So notice those one-third stops. That should ring a bell uh, for last week's classes when we looked at punctuation. Right? Okay, so let's go back to the line graph. I've done my point number one. Uh, still waiting on some students. Sheng Hung uh, Tsai has his up. Uh, at first glance, the camera's, at first glance, camera revenue. Uh, Sheng Hung, you don't need to say the camera's revenue. It's not a plural here because it's just a category. So it's one, it's the camera revenue. Okay, so at first glance, camera revenue started at around 70,000 and had a spike in February to 100,000. So you don't need the word income because you're already talking about camera revenue. So Shang Hung, camera revenue is the subject of your sentence. So every descriptive word or phrase that you use after camera revenue talks about the subject of camera revenue. So you don't need to say spike of income because I know as the reader that you're talking about camera revenue, okay? Uh, in, the, in the next part, you do it correctly, Shang Hung, where you say, and a dr slight drop in March because it's given for the reader that you mean, and a slight drop in camera revenue in March. So we, that's understood information. Is that clear, Shang Hung? So how the subject of your sentence controls the other elements, it's important to remember that so you don't make that mistake, okay? Um, so Shang Hung, it reads like this. At first glance, camera revenue started at around 70,000 and had a spike 
to 100,000 in February and a slight drop in March. Finally, it soared to roughly 115,000 in June, dollars in June. Okay, so that's how it reads, Shang Hung, when it's all corrected. Uh, Ferdov says, income from camera sales demonstrated a strong upward trend from January 2006 to February 2006 with around $100,000 and then gradually shrank in March and experienced growth to $115,000 by June, not in June, by June, because it was gradual for Dov, so it's by June. I made the same correction in my writing. In June means that it would make that huge jump all in June, okay? Uh, Kesey says, obviously, camera equipment had a spike in sales from January to February, followed by a decretion, and then gradually increased uh, to top off at $115,000 by June. Um, yeah, I, Kesey, to be more natural, I would say followed by a decrease, followed, there's a missing O there, but followed by a decrease and then a gradual increase to top off at 115,000. Okay, that's good. All right, um, good work. Uh, Preeti says, it is clear to see that income for cameras in January was almost $70,000. Then it spiked to 100,000 in February. After that, it slightly dropped in March. Finally, it gradually rose near 115,000 by June. Okay, let me read that one more time, Preeti. It's a little bit confusing. So it is clear. You, students, you don't need to write, it is clearly seen that. It is clear, okay? It's enough. It is clear that income from cameras in January was around $70,000, Preeti, not $70, $70,000. You need a K there, not the dollar sign. Then it spiked to $100,000 in February. Preeti, be very careful with your symbols. Dollar sign comes before the number, not after, and then the big K for thousand comes after. Those would be considered big mistakes, Preeti, in your IELTS, and they would drop your score if you have um, incorrect symbols which describe the information inaccurately. Okay, there's a really big difference between a hundred thousand and a hundred dollars. Okay, um, so after that, it dropped slightly in March, and then finally. Uh, rose gradually to 115,000 by June. Preeti, be very, very careful with that, okay? Those will cost you band scores. Um, Roshni says, in January, the amount of camera sales was $75,000. Uh, don't forget that, Roshni. Subsequently, in, because Roshni, we don't know if you're talking about dollars or if you're talking about the number of units sold. So students, that's why it's important to include uh, the dollar symbol or the word because it's unclear whether you're talking about units, the number of units sold, or you're talking about the actual dollar figure. Okay, so it's Im important to include that. Um, February, surprisingly, spiked to $100,000 and then gradually surged from March until the end of June. Uh, to $115,000. Roshni, do not write out $115,000 like that. It's a waste of space and time, okay? All right, students, um, unfortunately, we are out of time, but fortunately, that means that the rest of the analysis and the summary is up to you. Now, I know that I still owe you a task two essay which I will post later today, it's still in my mind, in our community board, and I will complete this one also and post it for you. But here you have a chance to uh, show what you have learned and finish this essay. So finish point number two regarding uh, video equipment revenue and miscellaneous electronic sales. Uh, point number three, uh, which is uh, audio equipment and TV revenue, and then point number four, which is computer revenue. So, of course, you will see this video on the channel, so you can go back and check 
this line graph, finish up your essay, send it to me by email, and I will let you know what kind of a band score you can expect for your writing. Again, my email for our newer members. It's adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com, okay? And uh, practice carefully, members. So write the rest of the essay, look at it, see if you can make corrections, make sure that your commas are in a, the correct place, make sure that you have good sentence structure, pay attention to your uh, verb tenses, Pay attention to passive, active voice, okay? Amarjeet says, to commence uh, with, camera was a common demand in January, starting at $70,000. Then it spiked in the following month to $100,000 and ended at the peak of $115,000 with the highest sales of all items. That's one interesting point that I'm not sure too many of us included that it was the highest revenue or had the highest sales. Okay, that's a good point to include. All right, um, for Dobbs, I see that you're already going forward with point number two there. That's great. Uh, put that into the homework, okay, for Dobbs, and I'll check it out for you. All right, students, again, for all of our viewers, you can become a member uh, for these classes by clicking the join button beside the subscribe button. If you don't see it, send me an email. I can give you more instructions. You can also become a member of our website, aehelp.com and g-i-e-l-t-s help.com. aehelp.com for academic i-e-l-t-s and g-i-e-l-t-s for general. Also download our app, academic i-e-l-t-s help. Good work so far, members. Coming up in 30 minutes. Uh, we will have a reading IELTS class with a reading passage and some strategy. That's it for now. See you soon.